Hello everyone, and welcome to my young and restless gossip channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Nikki and Victor made independent plans. Victoria watched from Claire's hospital room as she spoke with a small child about a Greek mythology book they had been reading together. They discussed the goddess of courage and wisdom, Athena. Victoria caught Claire's eye in the entryway. Nadia, a child recovering from pneumonia who was going to celebrate her seventh birthday, was introduced to Claire's mother. Nadia was escorted back to her room by an arriving nurse. Claire suggested that they read more books together if Nadia remained at the hospital the following day. Claire confided in Victoria that she felt stronger after viewing the children at the hospital. Claire conveyed optimism that she might be able to assist the kids. Claire was informed by Victoria, I am very proud of you. Claire noticed that the children gave her energy and she would have to get out of her own brain if she wanted to keep up. Claire said she was grateful for the diversion and that she felt as though she was receiving a new form of treatment for making kids smile. Although Claire understood that the work needed to be done, she said that she found her frequent therapy sessions to be exhausting. Claire expressed her will to recover. Claire inquired with Victoria on any updates regarding Jordan. Victoria wanted her daughter to forget about Jordan entirely. Victoria was overjoyed to learn that Claire had valued the mythology book she had given her and that she had enjoyed it. Victoria acknowledged that the parallels are very clear, while Claire enumerated the similarities between the Greek pantheon and the Newman family, Victor as Zeus, the convoluted family tree, all the non-stop intrigue and infighting. If it meant Victoria was Athena, Claire inquired. Victoria remarked, I've been known to hurl a thunderbolt or two. Victoria sat beside her daughter and explained that they were both on similar paths of self-discovery, to which Claire smiled and remarked, I love your visits. I really look forward to them. Victoria said to Claire that there's nothing that I would rather be focused on than you until she had her answers. Victor didn't tell Adam or Nick why they were called to his office, and he wasn't there to provide an explanation. Adam and Nick conjectured as to which of the family's issues prompted the gathering. Victor was definitely being held, according to a text message that both guys received at the same time from their father. When Nikki entered the room, Victor at the ranch ended a phone call. Resentful, Nikki said Victor had been talking behind her back about her. Victor reassured his wife that Jordan, not her, had been the subject of the phone conversation. Victor gave Nikki an update on the jail fire, it had been decided by the authorities that the fire was, in fact, arson. Six inmates remained missing even after the bodies of the deceased were identified. Nikki was assured by Victor that Jordan would be taken back. Nikki decided it would be best to trick Jordan into falling into a trap. Victor was determined not to allow Nikki to use herself as a pawn. He was adamant that Nikki should work from home in order to protect herself from Jordan as well as the allure of drink. Victor informed Nikki that he had eliminated all alcoholic beverages from the ranch. Nikki consented to follow Victor's instructions. After assuring Nikki that her horror will soon come to an end, Victor departed to meet his sons at the office. Sally and Chloe met at Crimson Lights. They discussed not having any new business on deck, but having almost finished their most recent assignment. Sally and Chloe discussed ideas for increasing sales. Sally acknowledged that she had burned too many bridges in Los Angeles to consider contacting her acquaintances there. Chloe and Sally couldn't figure out why their positive work and happy clients hadn't brought in more business. Chloe was aware that these problems were common for startups. Sally was adamant that she would not be approaching Nick for additional money, so Chloe decided it was time to return to their investor for a fresh round of funding. Chloe joked sarcastically that Sally and Adam had reconciled. Sally told Chloe that she and Adam were having a good relationship. Maybe you could just be happy for me, as my friend? Sally responded. Chloe grinned broadly and said, Yay! Chloe pointed out that one thing they hadn't talked about was keeping the company afloat by bringing on a new partner with more resources and a bigger network. Sally was worried about seating control, but Chloe considered the possibility of losing the entire business versus seating some power. Still not ready to give up on her and Chloe's venture, Sally offered a few more suggestions. I'm not going to concede defeat, Sally said. 
Victor showed up at Adam's office before he could convey the concept he wanted to run past Nick. He informed his boys about Jordan's escape as well as the fact that the jail fire had been started by arson. Adam and Nick were informed by Victor that Nikki would be working remotely. Given that Nikki disliked feeling stuck, Nick questioned whether she would follow through on that plan. Nick said he thought it was time to devise a strategy to get rid of Jordan's threat. Victor concurred. Adam proposed that they set Jordan up for a trap. Nikki had the same plan, Victor informed Adam and Nick, but he wouldn't allow Nikki to use herself as a pawn. Victor planned to take advantage of the fact that Jordan detested him just as much as she detested Nikki. Victor said, I can't talk about it until the pieces are in place, in response to Adam and Nick's requests for an explanation of his statement. Adam gave Victor any assistance he required. Nick could understand Victor's strategy to use himself as bait, even though he couldn't support it. Nick also offered to assist his father in any way that he could. Although he declined, Victor thanked his boys for their offer. This is a battle I have to fight all by myself, declared Victor. Nick later told Adam that, in light of Victor's departure, he wished Adam hadn't come out as so supportive of Victor's proposal. Adam clarified that he and Nick could keep Victor safe if they supported him. Nick acknowledged that it was the sole explanation for his agreement with his father. What had Adam intended to talk to Nick about before Victor arrived? Nick asked. Before sending it to Victor, Adam mentioned that he needed to talk to Nick about something that affected Sally. Adam told Nick that it was Sally's business he wanted to discuss, but Nick answered, Adam, if you're about to tell me that you're planning to marry her, there's no need for that. It doesn't concern me. Adam clarified that Sally's business had been slow since they had finished their initial assignments. Nick reassured his brother that Sally only needed to ask for further money if she needed it. Except that she won't, Adam answered. Adam clarified to Nick that his intention was not to pour money into Sally's company. Rather, Adam was hoping to bring back the notion of Sally leading a design department at Newman Enterprises. Adam wished to persuade Victor to accept the offer that he had previously rejected. Nick inquired of Adam whether Sally was aware that he would put forth the suggestion to Victor. Before Adam raised Sally's expectations, he needed to get Victor's approval and make sure Nick would be open to the proposal. Because Nick didn't think Victor would bring up the design division proposal again, Nick said Adam was brilliant. Adam said to Nick that he needed Nick's assistance to persuade Victor to do it. Lauren went to the ranch to see Nikki. Nikki expressed her gratitude to Lauren for helping her oversee Newman Media as she looked for Audra's replacement. To get her up to date on the projects Audra had been working on, Lauren asked Nikki. Nikki tried to explain, but found it difficult to concentrate. Lauren inquired if Nikki wanted to call Jack after observing that Nikki was having a difficult morning. Lauren clarified that she was present when Nikki texted Jack, pleading with him to divert Victor's attention from the dive bar. Lauren expressed to Nikki that she wanted to be a part of her support system even though she was unable to serve as her sponsor. I know you're struggling. How can I help? Lauren inquired of her friend Nikki, who replied that although she valued their connection, she didn't want to crumble in front of Lauren. Nikki clarified that the news of Jordan's escape was what was stressing her, not the alcohol. Lauren was informed by Nikki that Jordan had already started phoning Nikki in an attempt to frighten her. Lauren made a comparison between her own experiences with Sheila Carter and Nikki's predicament with Jordan. Nikki concurred. You're right. I won't let her intimidate me. I won't give her the satisfaction, said Nikki. Grabbing her phone, Nikki checked to see when she had heard from Jordan last. Nikki picked up the phone. The receiver did not speak, but the call was answered. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.